Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video. Now we've wrapped up the whole chapter 13.1. Now it's time to do some checkpoint questions. So question A, 1A. Elements are matter that contain only one kind of element. Sorry, one kind of atom. That is, of course, true. Remember, elements, they can only have their specific kind of atom. Like, for example, the gold element will only have gold atoms. Silver element will only have silver atoms. So true for this. Part B. All metals, they have high melting and boiling points. Now, it's when it says all metals, then usually it's a trick question anyway. And if you look back at the table, it's usually, it's not all of them, actually. It's, to be honest, it's most of them. Or you can write some of them. Usually, they have high melting or boiling points. Not always okay not all metals so this is false part c electrons and protons they have similar mass now this is talking about the mass now if you go back there the proton it has relatively the mass was one okay just to be relative it's actually the, the mass is actually very very small but electrons over here, it's even, even much, much, much smaller. It's, it's much smaller for this. The mass of electrons is much smaller. They do not have similar mass. The ones that have similar are protons and neutrons. So this is also false. Question D. An anion is formed when an atom loses one or more electrons. Now, let's recall. What's an anion? Onions. Onions, they make you cry. So this is the negatively charged ion. And how do you get an ion that is negatively charged? It's when you have more electrons, right? Because electrons are negatively charged. And how do you get more electrons? You get more, more electrons when you keep getting them, right? When you're gaining electrons. So here it says when an atom loses one or more electrons. No, that's not true. You get an anion when you gain electrons. So this is false. Question two now. The diagram shows the model of an atom. And I, as I told you, it's, Bohr, it's Bohr's atomic model. And let's see. Oh, so it's asking us to fill in the blanks. Okay, let's see. A1, the first one, you see it's positively charged. So obviously that's a proton. And two, two is over here. It is negatively charged and it's, you can see it's not at the nucleus. It's far away. So that's the electrons. Three, what's three? Three is this gray substance here, gray subatomic particle. There's no charge on it. So obviously that's the neutron. And they're asking what's the center called? The center is called the nucleus. Yep. And then they're asking the mass number and atomic number. Now the mass number, if you still recall, is the number of protons plus the number of neutron. Or it could be number of electrons plus the number of neutron for an atom of an element. Okay, or number of neutron. So let's find out how many protons are there. You'll see there's one, two, three, three protons. I'll write it down here. How many neutrons are there? There's one, two, three, four, four neutrons. And also let's just write down how many electrons there are. There are three electrons at the same time. Obviously. So what's the mass number? The mass number would be the number of protons, which is three plus the number of neutrons, which is four. So three plus four, the number of, uh, the mass number would be seven. And what's the atomic number? The atomic number is simply the number of protons or the number of electrons. So for this, this would be three. Okay, so that's a wrap for this. I'll see you in the next one.